Welcome to Rocky Watches Movies. Buckle up and prepare for a journey through the cosmos as we explore the fascinating world of Buck Rogers in the 25th century from 1979. Today we are diving into the lesser-known corners of this iconic sci-fi series to uncover behind-the-scenes secrets and casting choices to intriguing trivia and hidden references, we've got it all. So join us as we blast off into the unknown and discover 20 things you never knew about Buck Rogers in the 25th century. The character of Buck Rogers has been around for nearly 100 years. He first appeared in Armageddon 2419 AD, published in the August 1928 issue of the pulp magazine Amazing Stories. Created by Philip Francis Nolan, Buck Rogers soon became popular and was adapted into a syndicated comic strip that debuted in early 1929. This was followed by a radio adaptation in 1932, then in 1939, Universal Pictures produced a 12-chapter film serial starring Buster Crabb. Decades later in 1978, riding on the wave of success generated by Star Wars, Universal revisited their archives for potential science fiction properties. Spearheaded by Glenn A. Larson, they began developing a series of made-for-television movies based on the Buck Rogers character. Larson was also the producer of Battlestar Galactica, whose pilot episode had been released theatrically in international markets in 1978 to capitalise on the popularity of Star Wars, seeing the strong box office performance of Battlestar, Universal decided to release what was originally planned as the first Buck Rogers TV movie into theatres instead. Buck Rogers in the 25th century grossed over $21 million at the North American box office on a budget of $3.5 million, and later achieving international success as well. The film's huge success prompted NBC to commission a weekly TV series, which debuted on September 20th, 1979. The theatrical film also dubbed as a pilot and two-part episode for the series, titled Awakening, but it wasn't identical to the movie version. Several scenes were edited, including some to apparently tone down the more adult language. For instance, Buck's use of the word shit, and his description of Wilma as ballsy were cut from the movie. Tweaky's line, Oh, freezing my ball bearings off, was changed to, My micro discs are turning blue. They also cut the scene of Buck kicking Tiger Man in the balls out. They went a bit overboard, if you ask me. Now, there is also a debate about what he says in the episode Planet of the Slave Girls. Buck apparently says, If you call that interfering... There's something wrong with your Funk and Wagnalls. Funk and Wagnalls being a publisher of dictionaries and encyclopedias. Now I've listened to this over and over, and he is not saying that. He's definitely saying fucking Wagnalls, in my opinion anyway. Have a listen, and let us know what you think he's saying in the comments. If you call that interfering, there's something wrong with your fucking Wagnalls. In Buck Rogers, the space shuttle is named Ranger 3. A nod to NASA's Ranger program. In reality, the Ranger program ended in the 1960s and Ranger 3 was a 1962 lunar probe that missed the moon and was ultimately lost in space. If you're enjoying the video, a subscribe to the channel would be... No big deal, Buck. Producer Glenn A. Larson's first choice for the lead role was Kurt Russell. But at the time, Russell, who had extensive television experience, was focused on transitioning to a movie career. He was particularly keen to make this shift after narrowly missing out on the role of Han Solo in Star Wars. Despite playing the lead role, Gil Gerard was not a fan of the show, preferring the more serious tone of the original movie over the lighter comedic episodes of the TV series. He often clashed with producers and the network over the direction of the show, pushing for more serious storytelling. Gerard was known to refuse certain comedic lines and even rewrote scripts to align with his vision of the character. His dissatisfaction and difficult behaviour led to tensions on set, resulting in writers Anne Collins and Alan Brenner quitting midway through the first season. The network eventually threatened Gerard with legal action if he continued to disrupt production. During a break caused by an actor's strike, Gerard expressed in a Starlog magazine bombshell interview that he hoped the series would not be renewed for a second season, and he did not want to repeat the experience of the first. 
While many fans have fond memories of Buck Rogers and his adventures, critics often argue that the show falls far short of being a classic. For instance, John Javner's book The Best of Science Fiction TV lists Buck Rogers in the 25th century among the worst sci-fi shows of all time, alongside Space 1999 and Manimal. Bill Lengeman called the Buck Rogers episode Space Rockers the worst episode of TV science fiction he had ever seen. Originally, Tweaky the comic sidekick robot mostly only made unintelligible electronic noises, with Dr. Theopolis serving as his translator. However, this concept was considered too similar to R2-D2 and C-3PO from Star Wars. As a result, Tweaky was given his own distinctive voice for the series. And staying with Tweaky, his voice was primarily voiced by the legendary Mel Blanc, known for voicing characters such as Bugs Bunny, Porky Pig and Barney Rubble. Blanc had also voiced Daffy Duck as Duck Rogers in parodies of early Buck Rogers serials. For Tweaky, Blanc used a gruff voice similar to the one he used for Barnyard Dog. Buster Crab, who played Brigadier Gordon in the episode Planet of the Slave Girls, had previously starred as Buck Rogers in the 1939 film. In a nod to his earlier role, Brigadier Gordon tells Rogers, I've been doing this since before you were born. The character name Brigadier Gordon is also a reference to Crab's iconic role as Flash Gordon in the films from the 30s and 40s. This was one of Crab's final roles before his death in 1983 at the age of 75. Erin Gray was originally cast as Colonel Wilma Deering in the movie, but initially chose not to return for the TV series. During this period, one in Clay, who played Major Marla Landers in the episode Vegas in Space, briefly took on the role of Wilma. However, Gray later reconsidered and rejoined the cast. Producers insisted that Wilma have blonde hair, so Gray's brunette hair was dyed, which she reportedly hated. By the final episodes of the first season, Gray was allowed to return to her natural dark hair, and Wilma maintained this look throughout the second season. It has been suggested that Gray's initial reluctance to return may have been due to clashes with her co-star, though the pair reportedly made amends later. The series was renewed for a second season, but it underwent significant changes. Instead of defending 25th century Earth, Buck, Wilma and Twicky were now part of a crew aboard a spaceship called the Searcher. Their mission was to seek out the lost tribes of humanity that had scattered since Earth's 20th century nuclear war. Gil Gerard got his wish for a more serious tone and less humour, but despite initial satisfaction with the new direction and writers and producers, Gerard soon returned to being critical and difficult to work with. Ratings dropped significantly after the season premiere, and with Gerard's ongoing issues and the season being shortened due to the strike, NBC cancelled the series at the end of the 13-episode season. Princess Ardala's father in the movie, Emperor Draco, was portrayed by Joseph Wiseman best known for playing Dr. No in the first James Bond film. Although Wiseman's role was significantly reduced, leaving only a brief holographic appearance at the movie's end, Universal had already established licensing agreements based on an early rough cut of the film. As a result, Draco's image featured prominently in various Buck Rogers merchandise, including action figures produced by Mego. Despite his diminished role in the film, Wiseman did not hold a grudge and later appeared in the TV series as the character Morpheus in the episode Vegas in Space. Several well-known TV and movie actors made guest appearances. Notable examples include Jerry Orbach, Jamie Lee Curtis and Gary Coleman. The opening title sequence included stock footage from the Apollo 4 and Apollo 6 launches. Also, shots of the Bonaventure Hotel in downtown Los Angeles were featured. Buck Rogers achieved significant international success, with its biggest being in the UK. The pilot film became a major hit during the school holidays, and when the ITV network acquired the series, it arrived with considerable fanfare the following summer. The series debuted with the feature-length two-part episode Planet of the Slave Girls, and it proved to be a ratings powerhouse, winning the time slot for ITV for the first time in years. Interestingly, the pilot movie was not shown on British television until 1982, after the series had already ended. 
And staying with the UK, Buck Rogers faced off against the 18th series of Doctor Who and won the Saturday evening ratings battle by a significant margin. This success forced the BBC to move Doctor Who to a weekday evening slot for its next series, despite Buck Rogers being cancelled by then. Sega released the arcade video game Buck Rogers Planet of Zoom in 1982. It uses the Buck Rogers license referencing the space battles, though Buck himself is never seen. Stories of a new film and TV series have been doing the rounds for a while, with names like Frank Miller and George Clooney attached to different projects over the past few years, but nothing has come to fruit as yet. So you can only hope at this point if you would like to see a 21st century version of Buck Rogers. And there you have it, folks. You now know a little bit more about Buck Rogers in the 25th century. If you enjoyed the video, which I presume you did as you got this far, hit that like button and subscribe so you don't miss any future videos coming to Rocky Watches Movies. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.